Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another manga review. And today, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on Fire Force Volume 1 from Atsuchi Okuba, which is a series that has since been completed, having ran from 2015 to 2022 at 35 volumes. And I have to say, this might be the most underrated of the modern shonen series, in my opinion anyway. And that's because I hardly hear anyone talk about it. So you know what? I decided I'm going to talk about it. So I hope you join me for this review series going from start to finish with the whole manga. And uh, let's get right to it. So I want to start with the basic premise and story. And that is the fact that we have a group of elite firefighters in the fire force who all wield fire abilities. And they're trying to solve the mystery of spontaneous human combustion and defeat these monstrous beings known as infernals, which... When the spontaneous human combustion gets itself on a regular human, it turns them into an infernal, and there's, there's no going back. So a very interesting premise, but of course it has your typical shonen lead, who is this young boy right here, Shinra Kosakabe, who all he wants to do is be a hero, and uh, his ability is that he can ignite his feet and go really fast, have more powerful attacks, the whole nine yards. But he does have a very dark past which we'll explain more in the volume because it does happen here, although there's more elaboration later on in the series. But long story short, he lost his mother and brother show to an infernal at a very young age. So ever since then, he's wanted to join the fire force and figure out who that infernal was and, and what caused it. But also due to that traumatic experience, he has this shark tooth grin, which you can see right there, whenever he's in an awkward or nervous situation. And because of that, he is dubbed the Devil Boy. So, let's get right to it. Oh, by the way, also from the creator of Soul Eater. And Fire Force does have an anime series. I believe season two, uh, 48 episodes. And there is a season three currently in development, if you're interested in that. Death by Fire. So, this is the main group of, of characters. This is Shinra Kusakabe, the main protagonist. I'll introduce you to these guys once they enter the story. It will happen in this volume. But for now, let's just see what happens. So there's this gentleman on the train, when all of a sudden there's like a, a spark and fire is coming out of his mouth. So it immediately cuts to Shinra who's racing after the train and he notices, you know, he's running, his, <laughs> his feet start to ignite a little and he's like, oh, I can't, I can't run too fast otherwise I'll burn my shoes off. And he bumps into this woman where you see right away he has his shark tooth grin. Uh, like I said, when he gets in awkward situations, he just does that as a coping mechanism. And the old man here is like, oh, are you getting a peek? I don't blame you, kid. So a nice scenery of the train station. Really great artwork, man. And he hears a fire alarm when all of a sudden the, the train is coming here. There's all these flames spewing. And you see this demonic looking arm. And it's that man we saw at the very beginning now turned into an infernal. And this is where you get the name drop about spontaneous human combustion. And we have the conductor here trying to put it out of a fire extinguisher. But it is no match. So we see members of Company 8 here. And what's really interesting, like you see, there's a man here. There's another dude. There's a, a, a young lady. But there's also a nun with them, Sister Iris. Now that is because the Infernals were once humans. But the only way to defeat them is to kill them. So by doing that, they have to sort of honor the dead and, and say a prayer for them. So that's why they have Sister Iris there, which I thought was a nice touch. How they have sort of religious themes going on in Fire Force. So we have this dude has all these sorts of weapons that he can manipulate with his fire abilities. And he, he blasts a hole right through him as Sister Iris says, May thy soul return to the great flame of fire. And uh, the Infernal is defeated. As Shinra is watching, but this debris is falling, ready to hit that dude. And Shinra uses his his uh, his ability there to burn his shoes right off and save Sister Iris. And he has his grin as he saves the, the fair maiden. <laughs> like, oh, are you okay, sister? And he's like, ah, oh, this always happens. My shoes are ruined again. So they're looking at him, and, and it's like, who the hell are you? I'm the newest member of Special Fire Force Company 8. Third generation fire soldier, Shinra Kosakabe, sir. All right. And they're talking about the devil's footprints, which is like his ability. So here he is. And uh, we meet all the other characters. This is the captain of Company 8, Akitaro Obi. 
This is Lieutenant Takahisa Hinawa. And, um, you know, they're just chatting it up a little. And it shouldn't reveal us how he wants to be a, a hero. Like all good shonen protagonists want to do, right? So we cut, because of course there are two ladies, so we cut to a shower scene with uh, Maki, who is this woman with the, the brown hair, and then the nun, Iris. And they show up and Shinra gets distracted right away by, by Maki bending over, like, oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> look at this comment from the captain. Is this the fragrance of a wet woman? I'm feeling some pressure on my little fire <laughs> What the hell, man? So again, Akitaro is just telling Shinra about what they do and the only way to defeat the Infernals and how they're trying to solve the mystery of spontaneous human combustion. So we get all the different abilities here. Um, we have the, the two generation fire soldiers, Maki and Takehiso, who can use the flames, can manipulate them, but can't ignite them. Third generation Shinra, who can ignite his own flames. The captain, Akitaro, who has just been a firefighter for many, many years, but he has no powers. And then the nun, Sister Iris. What a team. So it cuts to a flashback of Shinra talking to his mother and brother Sho, how he's going to be a hero and protect everyone. But that was not the case, as an infernal took both his mother and brother, and that's when he adopted this sinister smile, which again, is just his coping mechanism. And he forever has these nightmares, ever since that day, he has these nightmares about this dark shadow. So they hear an alarm and Maki gets him and says, we gotta go. And I love the name of their vehicle here, the Special Armored Fire Engine, AKA the Matchbox. So here's, here's the group. Again, here's, you can just pause that if you wanna read all their powers, but good stuff. They're going on the case. And again, another uh, flashback as he's a young boy with his cape. And now he has the resolve to be a hero. Now that he's really in action with the, the big leaders as you will. So it's this burning building and he's, he's sort of terrified now as he's going through it, he sees a dead body just burned and he's thinking about his mother completely frozen as the others race in there trying to stop it and the infernal is stuck behind him. And again, keeps just thinking about his mother and how she was burned alive and he watched the whole thing. So he doesn't really know what to do. And we get this uh, this other scene of this man in the Fire Force outfit who, who saved Shinra. And after that day, because he can wield the, the fire abilities, they gave him these shoes, liquid nitrogen, so he couldn't just burn up. Because we saw before, he just burned his shoes right off. And, you know, it's obviously very uncomfortable for him. And he falls down. And, and they're like, that evil smile. He gives me the creeps. He's the devil boy. So, you know, he was unconscious just now. And Takahisa says, you gotta get up there, come on. You have a grandiose nickname like that, what are you doing? So he races in there. He's wearing like sandals now <laughs> because he's just gonna keep burning his shoes off. So why not? And he's charging in, ready to save the day. I'm not a devil, I'm a hero. I'll do it for you, mom. As his feet burn up. And he's going. Look at that face. And as this is happening, we have Sister Iris here doing her prayer. She's wearing like a gas mask so she doesn't breathe in the, the smoke. And look at this pose. Right through the in infernal. And that's that. So after saving the day, again, he thinks back to his mother and he greets this, uh, this man. And, and he says, you know, thank you, fire soldier Shinra. Thank you. Thank you, fire soldiers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Akitaro says, this is your first step to becoming a true hero. You gotta love it. So, the next chapter, we have a new recruit joining Company 8 named Arthur Boyle. And we also see Maki use her abilities, which we learned before she's second generation, so she can manipulate fire, but she can't get the flames started. So she's using a, you know, lighter and match and all that to get it going. 
And she has this little guy called Sputter, which is kind of like a bomb from Final Fantasy. And you see later, it really turns into something like that. And they're like, oh, it's so cute. And <laughs> as the two girls are, are playing up there, we have Shinra and Arthur battling. <laughs> And he's like, let me get a taste of your real firepower. And he has this sword that he can use with um, his fire abilities that he calls Excalibur. So his name, Arthur Arthur Boyle, uh, wielding the sword Excalibur, King Arthur. <laughs> I'm not sure we get the, the name drop. Sorry, I'm going ahead of myself, but I already know. So <laughs> the girls are sort of flirting with him, at least Iris is anyway, and they're going to have a, a battle. And then... Uh, Takahisa shows up and he's like, oh, we gotta put this fire out. No playing with that stuff. What are you kids doing? So he says, the two new recruits, you have to go up against Maki. And they're like, a girl? What do you mean a girl? But Maki is tough as nails. And Arthur is trying to be, oh, I could never harm a woman. There's no way. <laughs> and Maki's just beating the crap out of him. And what she does is she, she uses her abilities, right, to take Shinra's fire in, in his feet. And then knocks him off the ledge. He's like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. But then Maki gives his powers back and he can, he can uh, you know, fly up there again. So <laughs> Arthur wields his sword like, all right, I guess I will have to fight a woman. And same thing. She manipulates his uh, fire energy from the sword, takes it for herself, and just kicking him all over. <laughs> armbar, like Chris Jericho. Armbar. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Lots of good stuff. And what a hottie Maki is. She, she's a baddie. And they're imagining her. Yeah. <laughs> Takisa says, the devil, the knight, and the witch. <laughs> imagining her in her witch outfit. So here's her sputter turned into a giant bomb like Final Fantasy. And they're like, oh, she bested us. I can't believe it. So they have a, a friendly rivalry between the two of them. Eating all their food. Getting ready. And they're talking about their different weapons that they can use. And, and Arthur's like, I have my Excalibur. I don't need that stupid thing. So it cuts to this young girl who having, was having dinner for father, but then turns out he's turning to an infernal. And then she's like, no, what do I do? So they get an emergency call to go to, to save that girl and, and put her father out of his misery. They go in the matchbox. And as they have their weapons... They're showing them, and Akitaro says to them, you know, don't show your weapons like that. Always keep them concealed because you never know what's going to happen What if there's a, a young, innocent person there and how they might feel because, you know, this little girl just saw these two boys wielding weapons knowing that her father's going to be killed. And that's when he says, you know, we have to save the world from these infernals, but it is murder because they were once humans. So he's just wreaking havoc out here. And then we, it cuts to this, right? This ominous looking dude, which, you know, stay tuned for later volumes, but what's that about? Like this face, is it ready? Yes, it's ready. Hmm. So they're in there trying to put a stop to the infernal. And Iris is doing the prayer again as Arthur wields Excalibur and he does it nice and quick from behind for whatever that's worth as he fades away. But then the whole house catches on fire and notice this from Akitaro as they're leaving because the whole house can be burned down. He notices a picture of the family here and he grabs it as they escape. And again, it cuts back to this, this ominous dude. Special fire force, eh? You're just blowing smoke. That was only a little gag. So is this fucker behind the uh, Infernal? Turning that poor girl's father into an Infernal? Hmm. Again, stay tuned for later volumes. So they're, they're greeting this young girl, and Akitaro gives a picture while saying, Your father was a brave man. He stood against the fire and won. If you ask me... Your father and mother both kept you safe from flames. Because, yeah, that's another thing, too. I, I might have skipped over it. She was talking about how she had previously lost her mother to an infernal as well, and now her father turned into an infernal. But at least she has a picture of her family to, to look on. Which, looking at that picture, I guess that's kind of like same face syndrome, but it, it kind of looks like Akitaro, doesn't it? Kind of, I guess. 
So it, it cuts to the next day. Now we have the rookie fire soldier games and we see this baddie right here, Tamaki Kotatsu, who, what an outfit. My goodness, what a hottie. <laughs> so she shows up, part of company one and Shinra is noticing her like, oh, who's this girl? <laughs> As he's gritted like that. And she's like, what are you looking at? What are you staring at, you pervert? So they're looking at all the other uh, members in attendance and hmm. Wait a minute here. Again, I know, but I'm just showing you guys for uh, foreshadowing purposes. I don't know. <laughs> if you read it before, you probably already know. But anyway, Shinra notices Company One here, this, this dude with an eye patch, and he remembers that that is possibly the man who saved him when he was a young boy. So he tries to approach him and, and you know, see who he is. And he's like, oh, well, we'll see you in the games. And as he's talking, he walks away. But Tamaki gets in front of him. And uh oh, <laughs> he grabs her. You little scum like you can't just waltz up and talk to my captain like that. What are you doing? You want to keep gritting, you creep? And he's trying to talk to her. But then Tamaki, after <laughs> after Shinra cops a feel, she starts like falling over the place. Her her, bo <laughs> her boobs in Arthur's face. Stop touching me. You touched me, you weirdo. And then <laughs> she goes back to Shinra and look at his face. He's grabbing her ass now. And this is the reveal of one of Tamaki's abilities, or shall we say, curses. Curses! To think my chronic lucky leecher lore condition would act up at a time like this. And her lucky leecher lore uh, acts up from time to time, causing her to either lose clothes or get into <laughs> situations like that. Because there are later volumes where she's uh, wearing more clothes and they just, they just fall off. <laughs> and the only way to explain it is the lucky leecher lore. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> and she's kicking them now, but I'd say Shinra won. So they're gonna prepare, they have a, like a, a simulation where all the, the members of the different companies are going to compete. You know, we just saw Tamaki's part of uh, one, that guy's part of group two, Shinra's part of eight, and they're gonna go in there and see what happens. All the, and Arthur too, he's a new recruit. So we see Tamaki's ability here called Nekomata, where she has cat ears and a tail and she can go really fast running on all fours. <laughs> so there she goes. And as they're in here, again, we're greeted by this son of a bitch. I took care of everyone standing your way. Now you can focus on me, devil's footprints, huh? Don't you want to know more about it? The fire that started in you 12 years ago, what? So going back to the flashback of Shinra's mother and brother dying, this guy's insinuating that Shinra did it 12 years ago. And to be continued. So lots of good stuff. I thought it was a great introductory volume. I mean, definitely check it out. Check out the anime. Uh, it's got everything that Kevin likes in a manga from really an interesting, again, this concept, just fire abilities, fighting fires. It's just, it's just crazy, man. You love to see it. There's very attractive female characters, which I always enjoy. We have Maki, Ira. Oh, yeah, there's the bath scene again. But my favorite, I think, is Tama King <laughs> and her lucky leecher lore, which, you know, for years now, people have been bitching about this. Oh, we heck can hate the fan service. Well, I love the fan service. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say it. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. And stay tuned as I continue the Fire Force manga review series throughout the next few months. So thanks guys, have a great day and peace out.